There are three of us that meet every Thursday morning, and we have been for years. March 2018, one of the three of us said, I really see a spiritual movement of men. We started praying over that. Now I realize this is the Business on Purpose podcast. My name is Scott Beebe, the host. And most of my podcasts are me in my truck after I've just finished with a heroic small business owner giving you some principles that we discussed. This one's a little different. This is a recording from a spiritual movement of men. We began praying for that March 2018, and on October 11th, as Hurricane Michael was blowing through our town, 60 men got together at venue 1223 in Bluffton, South Carolina, and it began a spiritual movement of men. Head coach of Charleston Southern Division I basketball team, Barkley Radeball, was our feature speaker and blew it out of the park. This is part one of his talk on the Business on Purpose podcast. I want to talk to you this morning. Uh, we're going to be done at 8 o'clock because I know at 8 o'clock you're going to walk out. And I don't blame you. I know you got to get to work. Uh, we're going to be done at 8 o'clock sharp. Uh, I want to talk to you about leadership. Uh, I'm going to ask you twice to close your eyes and to envision I'm going to ask you twice to put yourself in a different place and to envision what I described to you. Our scripture this morning is 1 Corinthians uh, 3. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, stubble, his work will be shown for what it is. Because the day, capital D, will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the fire. So just real quick, just indulge me. Even if you don't want to do it, just close your eyes, and I want you to envision this in your life. Because this is going to happen to every man in here. You're going to stand before God the Father. I'm going to stand before God the Father. And we're going to give an account for everything that we did, all of our work. All of our work is going to be put into two piles. So I want you to envision these piles. Over here is wood, hay, and stubble, and over here is gold, silver, and precious jewels, and there's two piles, and then it's tested by fire, and the wood and the hay and the stubble burn away, and the gold, silver, and precious jewels last for eternity. So I want us to see yourself standing there in those two piles, and then see an engulfing, powerful Deep, hot flames come through. You're fine, but all that is left is gold, silver, and precious jewels. And you take that with you for all of eternity. Okay, open your eyes. I got three kids. I got a son-in-law, so I have four kids. I, we talk as a family all the time about leadership. I've been so impressed to reconnect with Jared and Scott. I, I, I've just been overwhelmed with the leadership and the men that it become. And Chris, I just met six months ago, and the man that he is. And I can envision in this community that we have a, a room full of leaders, that you are leaders. And if you're not leading a company, if you're not leading an organization, you're still a leader. You are a leader. Whether you want to be or not, you are a leader. You are leading a wife, a family, a Sunday school class, an organization, a softball team, a little league team, you're leading something. If nothing else, if nothing else, you're leading yourself. There's four areas of leadership that we sell to our team. Four areas of leadership. Number one is you must be able to lead yourself. Number two is you must be able to lead a family someday. Number three is we encourage you to someday be a man that leads others. And four, someday, hopefully, you're going to lead leaders. 
I'm going to talk to you this morning briefly about leading others. But I want to encourage you that there's two steps before that that we as men have to accomplish before we're in a position to lead others. We have to be able to lead ourselves. We have to be able to lead ourselves through discipline and goodness and energy and vision and envisioning. We have to be able to lead ourselves. Number two, we, someday we have to be able to lead our family. If we can't lead our family, how in the world can we lead an organization or a class? So I want you to just know that there's a building block of that. And if you're not in a great position, that's okay. I'm not either. We're all fallen men just trying to do a great job in the areas that we're involved in. I want to talk to you about leading yourself. I lead 18, 19, and 20, and 21, and sometimes 23 if they enjoy their sophomore year a couple years. Uh, men, it's really difficult. It's really difficult. We have an incredibly difficult schedule. We play an incredibly different league. Florida, Marquette, I mean, it's really difficult for a small private school to compete, but we're going to do it. And we're going to compete very well. But I want to give you an acronym, CCCC. That's what I deal with my guys. You can call it SUCK, however you pronounce your sentence. And it's not really an acronym, but a lot of the guys I coach, they don't know what an acronym is, so that's okay. So we're just going to keep rolling. They believe it's an acronym. So we're rocking with that. The first C is competency. If you're leading others, you have to be, I have to be, we have to be incredibly competent in the area that we are leading. Guys, that is work. That is hard work to be competent in the area that you're leading. Who in the world would find a, want to follow a leader who is not competent in that area? <clears throat> And I know how it goes because I've been the same. I've been a, a head coach at the same school for 14 years now. And there's been times of, of my career where I am fighting for competency, and there's times when I'm tired. And I just can't go to one more coaching clinic. I can't hear one more way to attack a 2-3 zone. So I am done. I right, good. We had a good enough year. But I'm calling, I'm, I'm telling you, man, that God is calling us to be extremely competent in the area where you are where you are leading. And I want to encourage you to re-energize this morning and re-energize this week and to fight for extreme competency. That you are the best that you can possibly be in your field. That you work at it. That you go to clinics. That you go to seminars. <clears throat> that you are studying that you fight for the area where you are leading. It is God honoring to be the best that you can possibly be in the area that you are leading. To study fatherhood, to study hus being a husband, to work at it, to fight for it, to, to turn the TV off, to turn the social media off, and to be competent in what we do. I tell our assistant coaches, I want you to be a head coach and I want you to be a better head coach than I've ever been. But to do that, you've got to work. You have got to work and understand basketball upside and down, understand recruiting up, upside, downside. You understand every bit of it. It is worth fighting for. So the first C is competence. The second C is confidence. Great competency brings confidence. It brings earthly confidence. Understand the vast difference between confidence and arrogance. Confidence is a deep understanding of the successful repetition that you have had to earn earthly confidence. To earn the right to be an elite surgeon or an elite whatever you are, lawyer, an elite whatever you are, business owner. 
to walk into that leadership with great confidence. Have you earned, have I earned the right to have that confidence? Have I done the work and the successful repetition to lead with great confidence? So very rarely is there a problem that I haven't studied or thought about and, and, and contemplated and become confident in handling. There is nothing wrong as a godly man in being extremely confident in what you do. That is stage one. Stage one of confidence is an earthly confidence, a book knowledge, an understanding of where we are and how we can handle those situations and to be extremely confident. The ultimate confidence is this. If anyone, Philippians 3, 4 and a half through 9, if anyone thinks he has the reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. This is Paul talking. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness faultless, but whatever was to my profit, I consider it a loss for the sake of Christ. And then skip down to verse 13, and here's what I want us to hear this morning. But one thing I do, Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal for which God has called me. Ultimate confidence, guys. Ultimate confidence. There's earned confidence, and we have to work. But the ultimate confidence, no, is that you are operating where God has called you to operate. That you are walking in his will and his specific call for your life. Because why does that give you confidence? Because now he's in charge. He's in charge of our success. He's in charge of our failure. He's in charge of our business. He's in charge of our marketing. He's in charge of it all. As we are walking, what Paul said, hey man, I'm the elite of the elite. I came from the right tribe. I came from the right organization. I study. I know everything about it. The Old Testament, I know every detail. I persecuted Christians. I had unbelievable zeal. I was the elite, and I gave it all away. And he is, was the greatest uh, writer, author, had the most influence of any man that's ever walked the earth from a biblical standpoint outside of Jesus. Because he surrendered all that and he said, he said, I, I press towards the goal for which I have been called. God called me to this. God is now in charge. He survived shipwrecks. He could survive snake bites. He survived imprisonment. So God called him home. We got to work for our confidence. We got to work to be a lead in our business and a lead in what we're doing and grind and work and study. But for that combined, that alone is not enough. But that combined with operating in the calling that God has called us to is the ultimate confidence for me. You're ready to lead from a confident way. Number three is clarity. Great leadership requires tremendous clarity. We are all communicators. You are a communicator. You're a communicator to your family. You're a communicator to your wife. You're a communicator to your organization. You are a communicator to those that you lead. You are a communicator. It's been said to make something simple out of something complex is the greatest way to lead, to teach, to coach, to lead, we need to operate with great, great clarity. In God's economy, he teaches us and we teach others. Clarity is extremely important. I want to encourage you in a couple ways that I've learned and I'm dealing with young men. I don't know what you're dealing with. Eliminate 
any type of, clear, of, of, of communication that doesn't often involve face-to-face -face contact. Clarity and communication is best when we're talking one-on-one. -on -one. Well, I can't do Find a way to do it. Find a way to get FaceTime with those that you lead. Individual FaceTime with those that you lead. My most effective leadership is in my office one-on-one -on -one with one of my players. Dealing with issues in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, situation is most effective. The burden of understanding is not on the listener, but on the speaker. Jesus was extremely simple and clear in his communication to us. As leaders, fight <coughs> for great clarity. So those were the first three C's of leadership that Barkley Radel Ball, head coach of Charleston Southern University's basketball team, laid out for 60 men in a room in Bluffton, South Carolina. And it launched a spiritual movement of men. Come back to the next podcast episode for the fourth C. And one I might set you up for could be the most powerful C you've ever heard as it's laid out for leadership. We'll see you next time right here on the Business on Purpose podcast.